God is good. <laughs> Amen. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. Thank you for allowing us to just come and just enjoy your spirit today. We give you all the praise. Because we could, do it, we could not do it without you. And we couldn't do it without you. That's why we thank you. We continue to look to the hills when we come at our hill. That when we leave this place and things don't go right, we're going to still trust you. Hallelujah. We're going to still believe that through it all that you're going to take care of us. That's why we just love you today. We know that you died on Calvary's cross. Not just because it's written in the book, but it's in our hearts. And we know that you did it just for us. And we know that you rose on a third day morning. That's why we're here this first day of the week. To just remember what you did for us. And we love you for it. No matter what comes, no matter what ups and downs may show itself, it doesn't matter how Satan might be the prince of the air. It doesn't matter how he tries to bring on destruction in our lives. We know he's still alive. So we give you praise for allowing the Holy Ghost to keep us and to just be a blessing unto us. To just hold us and teach us and open our minds to know the difference between a lie and the truth. That we can praise you even when it doesn't look good. And know that you will take care of us anyhow. So we thank you, oh God, for it. So continue to bless us. Continue to trust us and know that we are not worthy, but you just love us because of who you are. And so we thank you for it. We ask, oh God, that you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let all say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God, it is so good when you, when you are loving him caring about him. Things become sort of easy in life. Things don't be as hard as things are not as hard as, as one may expect. When you learn how to lean and depend on the Lord. It's just those who have decided that they're going to lean and depend on themselves. But we must understand that Jesus came and he died. And there was purpose in it. That he didn't just come and die just to do it. Hmm? And he only had the name Jesus because that's the way God wanted it. God decided that he himself would dress himself in flesh and give himself a name called Jesus. And that's why he says to you that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. That's right. Huh? That's right. Yeah. Not at a man, but at the name. So you must understand that in the world today there is a push to hush the name. And if we don't continue to call the name of Jesus, 
give him praise, he'll cause the wind and the waves to praise him. Hallelujah. He will cause the thunder to clap his hands. And he can whip the wind up to it sound like a song saying. And if you won't dance, the trees will dance for you. Even if they just dance out of their shoes.
you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now worketh in the sons of disobedience. Did you, did you hear what it said? He said, we all been there. I don't care how you're acting. I don't care where you are now. I don't care how you dress up now. I don't care what you think you are now. He said you were there whether you want to admit it or not. You might act like you ain't there now. You might act like you have gone and graduated and you have gotten above and beyond. But I'm here to tell you, when you start acting like that, you move backwards. All right. yes, yes, yes. Yes. Because he said that if he brought us out, you ought to have some love in your heart somewhere. Right. Right. And you ought to be kind enough to share with somebody how you got where you got. Right. Ought to be willing to let somebody know that if it wasn't for the love of God and the grace of God in my life, I would not be where I am today. Have forgiven me for my trespasses and my sins if he hadn't done it. So it doesn't matter how much you forgive me, and I'm thankful for your forgiveness, but if he don't forgive me. So I say to you, if I've done anything to you, I have asked God for forgiveness, but I need you to ask God to forgive me. Yes. I need you also to say, Lord, to clean my heart. Yes. I want you to forgive them for what they've done to me. Yes. So I ought to, you know, folks have said that they're, 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 they're trying to go in, I just want to be right, so that, 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 that makes it right. Yes. Getting it right with God. Yes. And just trying to make it in. See, you know, you know we were, 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 were saved not by us, but by the power of the Lord. Yes. Now we know who's, who's trying to rule the hell. Yes, sir. Now he said, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Uh -huh. huh? yeah. So we have to understand that we came to this point in life not by anything that we have done, but it was done for us. That in the beginning God created man. God created woman out of man, and the actions that they took, we've got to deal with. And we might not want to deal with it, and we might want to act like that we're above it, but you stuck with it whether you like it or not. And there come times when you want to do things, but yet in your mind, it has to be a difference. You say, but if you love me and you care about me, there must be a renewing of the mind. Huh? He said, you, you've got to renew the mind. And if you renew the mind, then you can walk in the light. That's right. That's right. Because if you walk in the light, then folk can't look at you strange. Amen. They'll say, but I want you to look at me strange because I'm not like everybody else. And when you talk about being disobedient, no, I'm not being disobedient. I'm being obedient because I'm not acting like you. Right. I'm walking in at the light of the Lord. And you don't want to walk with me because where you are can be, you can be seen. And I'm not mad at you because you don't want to walk with me. I'm not upset with you because of where you walk. Because if I get mad at you and I talk about where you walk, then I'm taking myself backwards. And I'm not trying to go backwards, I'm trying to move forward. And if I stay in the light long enough and you love me long enough, you will come to the light with me. Yes. But it takes time. Yes. It takes the effort to come from me to stay 
in the light, yeah. for you to love the light and to come to the light. Yeah. This walk that we have is an easy walk. Yeah. And the first thing that I have to say to you, you're not walking for anybody you sit next to. You're not walking for your mama, you ain't walking for your sister, you ain't walking for your brother, you ain't walking for your cousin, you walking for yourself. Now when you were children, your mamas and daddies walked for you. But now that you have become grown, don't know y'all like that word grown. <laughs> You have decided to walk in your own direction. So walking in your own direction, you must be willing to deal with your own situation. And you should be willing to love the Lord because if he loved you enough to die for you, you ought to be loving him enough to walk in the light with him. Because God, what? He is light. And there's no darkness that hangs or be or he or is in him. For he is light. I know I'm preaching to two eggs, so that book you brought with you, that's what he said it is. It's a two eggs, so. But I'm doing it with love. Because we're supposed to have this love for the Lord. Now, it is said at the end that, that we're not in this by ourselves. And we're by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, hmm? who is rich in mercy because of his great love huh? with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespass. Made us alive together Thank with Christ. Yes. By grace, yes. you have been saved. Oh, yes. Huh? You, so you know that where you are and where your life is, you are a child of God if you believe. Yes. So you say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. Then I am captured and I am a child of the king. Yes. I am in the light. And I will remain in the light. Uh -huh. Come on, preacher, preach. And ain't no demon nor devil can draw me into the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? He said he loved me so that he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Yeah. You say you want to be blessed? You say you want to be out of the issues that you're in? You say you want to have good finance, you say that you want to, to get a good home, you want to get all of these things that, that you want God to bless you with, then you need to be of God. Hmm? You can't walk on somebody else and expect for God to bless you. If you want to be a child of wrath, then you receive wrath. But if you want to be a child of God, you got to turn the light on. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hmm? And, 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 and listen to me, it is not a bad thing. God loved us so that he died for us. That we can be forgiven of our sin. And because he has forgiven us, he just asked us to walk with him. Mary Magdalene was in her own house, doing her own thing. And the preachers came and caught her doing her own thing. And they brought poor Mary Magdalene to Jesus. Y'all hear me? Yeah. And told them. And asked Jesus, what do we do? Do we stone her to death? And the Bible said Jesus didn't say that. He stooped down and he wrote her in the sand. And said to them, you who are without... You who are without sin, cast the first stone. And they said the only noise you could hear was the dropping of the hearts and the minds and the heads of all of those who brought her. 
said to her, where are thine accusers? And she said, I, I don't see them no more. They go in And then Jesus, you know what Jesus said to her? He said, now go and sin no more. And then you got to understand he hadn't died yet. So he hadn't died for her sins yet. So he told her to go and sin no more. But that wasn't it. The great thing of it is, the mystery in this, is that she did not go away. She got in the light. She got in the light. She got excited about it. A change came on the inside of her. She became a brand new spirit. And she got in the light and she started following and walking in the light. Y'all heard that song, Walk in the Light, the beautiful light. For the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is the light of the world. Mary Magdalene got it way back then. And walked and followed him all the way to the cross. If you, let Peter, if you let Philip say, Jesus loved us. Because every time, you can read the scripture, every time the, the, the fellows got a message, they got it from her. And they got sick of it. Peter said, I'm sick and tired of you sending messages to us on that woman. Now, you, you, time I turn around, that woman come and tell me that's what Jesus said. Huh? Jesus rose early one Sunday morning. And she was there. Came there looking for him. And he told her, go and tell the boys. Go ahead of me. But she ran and told him, I found him. I seen him. I know where he is. Come see the Lord. And they ran until they went to try and find him but could not find him. But isn't it good how it is that when we walk in the light, how God bless us. When, when, when we do the things that we should, when we begin to stand up and be counted as God wants us to be counted. Yeah. When we begin to love him like he wants us to love him. When we begin to stop flying after all types of philosophies and words and great sounding words and things that people say to us. When we begin to believe in the word of God and stop believing in those who think they got it better than we. Stop following those because they got a, 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 a special name. They have become a prophet as well. I need to follow the prophet. Well, I, I'm going to follow the bishop. I'm going to follow the evangelist. I'm going to follow God. Hang on! 
think he cut me off in the highway while I'm on the way to the job. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to make sure everything all right. I'm not going to worry in that day for anything. If I don't have the money to get lunch, God will provide. Because he's already given it to me. And I just got to be ready to receive the benefits of God. By grace, you, are, you have been saved. And raised, up, raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that tells me where he is, I am also. You, 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 you hear me? He's on the right hand of God, I am too. What he got, I got. Y'all hear me today? The Lord Jesus said, I'll open up a window and I'll pour out a blessing upon you that you can't even capture and hold on to the blessing that I give you. So if I believe in him, I know for a fact that I already got everything I need. And I don't need to struggle myself in, 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 in the things that I'm trying to get. All I got to do is to keep pressing my way. He said, sometimes you have to get broke to get rich. And our problem is we don't want to be broke. Y'all heard what I said? Our problem is we don't want to be without. We don't want to be the our last dime. We don't want to give our last dime. And know that if you give it, God will bless you. We're not willing to trust him. And that's where he's pushing us. He's pushing us to a place to remind us of what he has done for us already. And if we remember what he's already done for us, then we can see what he's going to do for us. Amen. Every step, every day, you should have in your heart what God has already done for you. And when you wake up in the morning, you ought to wake up with it in your heart, knowing that I'm doing what I'm doing today to remember what God has already done. Said that in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved yeah. through faith, yeah. and that not of yourselves, yeah. it is the gift of God. Yes, it is. Yeah. Not of works, yeah. anybody nothing you've done, yeah. lest anyone should boast. Yeah. For we are his workmanship, yeah. created in Christ Jesus yeah. for the good works yeah. which God prepared before him, that we should walk in them. That's full of life. And knowing that if we love him and we sacrifice and we cherish him and we begin to do what God would have for us to do and put our hands to the work of God, God will bless you. He will give you the abundance of your heart. He will give you the desires of your heart if you only take your mind off yourself. We got to stop being mad with ourselves. We got to stop being mad with others. We've got to stop going about worrying about what somebody else is doing. What are you doing? In the church. What is your sacrifice for the day? Folks want to get mad about what Deacon Rickerson ain't doing. Well, what are you doing? The church ain't doing this and the church ain't doing that, but what are you doing? Stop worrying about what is not happening in your eyesight, but start letting what you are doing be seen in your own sight. If you began to walk in the love of God, begin to walk in the light of God, then you will know 
and see the abundance of God. Because God said, if you let your light shine, he'll draw. We worry about who leaving the church. Why are they leaving the church? Turn your light up. Must be got your light turned down. Go walking away. If you begin to sacrifice, God will sacrifice unto you. We got to change who we are. We say we love him. We say we cherish him. We say we come in here to, 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 to do this in the members of him. Yeah. We say we love the cross. Yeah. But get on it. Amen. Do what he did. Yeah. Die for me. Yeah. Be nailed in your hands. Yeah. Go into the grave. Yeah. Just for me. Yeah. That's where we've got to get to. We've got to get to the point that we are learning how to sacrifice yeah. for the Lord. And when we began to work in the church and sacrifice in the church and do for the church, God will begin to bless you in your life. He will begin to allow you to see abundance that you've never seen before. He will give you things that you would never imagine in your mind that you could have. But you've got to step out of the darkness and come into the marvelous light. He's already done it for you. He's already died for you. And you've got to start a new walk. Yes. Everybody's afraid of 13 because they call it evil. I'm saying it's going to be a brand new way of living. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You've got to take it. It's going to be a brand new way of living because if you take it as something evil, then 2013 is not going to, going to yield you anything. That's right. You ought to take it today and leave here knowing that God has already prepared a way for you. Yes. And as you move forward next year, you ought to move forward with boldness and love and joy and happiness and peace and long suffering. Yes. You ought to have those fruits in you. Yes. To know that when next year comes, that you're going to be bold in the Lord. Yes. Are you preaching not preaching? Yes. <laughs> That's how you become victorious. That's how you gain. That's how you overcome your sadness. That's how you overcome your confusion. That's how you get to the point to know that you're not having a nervous breakdown. You just got mess going on. Because if you're loving the Lord and you're breaking down, then you obviously are dealing with the wrong side. Because he is the one that works together and put nerves together and, and make sure that nerves stay in place. He's the one that loves you and bring the Holy Spirit into your life and make sure that you can stand in the face of adversity. He's the one that comes and makes sure that it doesn't matter how you're pressed down, how you are put together. He said that's how he wants us to be. Pressed down, shaking together, and then it's going to run over. got to be ready. What this year is bringing is not just for you. He's bringing it for somebody else you know. And if you're big enough to go out and sacrifice enough for somebody else you know, then your reward will come. What you've been looking for, the door will open. Get your mind off of you and stop worrying about just you. And start, you know, the, 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 the thing of listening to Reverend Deacon Rickerson in, in, in Sunday school, how he blessed the lady's life. He planted a seed in her life. Amen. Amen. Ran into the gas station. She, her credit card wouldn't work. Well, I, I imagine she knows she had no money, but she had to try it. <laughs> she had to try it. I had to get the phone out of there somehow. I had to try it, and when it didn't work, I well, I got to turn somewhere. But God put you in places so that you can be a blessing to someone. If he didn't have the heart that he had, she wouldn't get what she got. So he gave her a tank of gas. She's in the car with her, her baby, trying to go home. And he gave her some money so she could eat. You got to know how to plant a seed in 
someone's life so that God can bless you. We've got to stop being mad and angry about the little bit of money we got. And that's why I talk to you all so much about planting a seed. And I say to you, it's not about the amount of seed that you give, but to be religious about giving your seed. Because if you give it to God, he will surely give it back to you. And if you got to plant the seed and then complain about it and be mad about it and be worried about it and talk about it and talk about what the church ain't doing, keep your seed in your pocket. God can't use angry money. We're moving in a different place. We're going down a different road. And we're moving towards the Lord. And you've got to want to go. Because if it's not where you want to go, then you need to find that place that you need to be. That place that will make you happy. That place that will give you what you want. That place that will make you the person that you want to be. We'll be glad to give you a letter to show that you were a glorious member in New Mount Moriah Christian Ministry. But we would rather for you to stay here and grow and be bold right here. We would rather for you to stay and to show yourself walking in the light of the Lord right here. I would rather for you to stay and to shame the devil. And to let him know that he has not brought you down to a place where you are so low that you've got to walk away. But you can stand up and you can be bold in the face of the outrage and in the face of the sadness. You can be right here and be bold enough to overcome. That you can be blessed right here in the struggle. In the name of Jesus. But we've got to remember who gave to us first. And he gave to us first. And if we sacrifice unto him, I'm talking about a view. Sacrifice it unto him. He will fill your church. I'm talking about you. He will fill your spirit with spiritual blessings that will overflow. Let's give God some praise today. there be anyone who is seeking after the Lord today and trying to find him in a place that you can walk with him, I would hope that you would stand and come this morning, that this might be the place that you can begin. But if there's another place that you want to go and begin your walk with him, we offer this opportunity that you might come and join. Let not this day be a day that you can't connect with him, but come and connect with him and we will go with you wherever you want to go. It is so important that when you've got time and while you've got time to connect with him, that you do it. Because this may be your last time. And we offer it unto you, that you come unto him, all ye that labor and heavy labor, and he will give you rest. We just want to do it the old way. We want to sing, come to Jesus, just as I am. Can we do that? Can we sing it the old way? Can we just sing how about worship?
standing. Everyone standing all over the church. Look at the person next to you. Tell them what you want to tell them today. Everybody say, Amen. 